The speed of light is the fastest of all existing speeds in our universe. That's what we know, right? But what if I say the speed of light is incorrect, considering that the value we know as the speed of light, 299,792,458 meters per second, is just an average speed value that doesn't remain constant all the time and in every scenario. You might think I'm insane, and just putting an allegation on all the efforts of Galileo Galilei, Leon Foucault, and Ole Romper. No doubt, all these great men had put their extensive efforts in figuring out the speed of light. Yet there's something they've missed. By saying that the value of the speed of light is an average of the actual speed of light, I don't mean to say that the speed of light changes while passing through different mediums. Instead, I mean something else. So let's dive deeper into this to prove with the experiment that light goes back in time. For years, scientists have tried to take control over light by defining it as much as possible and finding its speed. But it seems like light loves to play with us, exhibiting the qualities of both a particle and a wave. The only thing that appears to be constant about light is the speed of light. But as I already said, it isn't constant. So, to continue what I said earlier, the speed of light can change in certain circumstances even if there's no dense medium present. Light travels at 299,792,458 meters per second, and considering relativity theory, this speed remains constant no matter your frame of reference. Let's take this example to make things simpler. Two spaceships moving in space with different velocities will see a beam of light passing nearby at the same speed. Why? Because the time and distance will flex, not letting these spaceships see the actual speed of light. But there's a considerable fact about the speed of light. Scientists consider this value in a vacuum with no restrictions and an ideal situation. We already know that its speed is somewhat affected when light travels through metal. Air, a very light medium, still reduces the speed of light to 299,705,000 meters per second. While if the same light enters a river, it will become even slower at 225 million meters per second. But why does this happen at all? Well, when light hits a metal surface, it excites its electrons. These excited electrons have their own magnetic field, generating another beam of photons slightly slower than the original light speed that entered this metal. This new light beam joins the original light beam, mixing up their speed and bringing it to average. This speed can be faster or slower than the previous light that enters the metal. Isn't that an acceptable explanation? Well, scientists accepted it too, and enjoyed it so much that they tried to have some exciting experiments with it. To play with the speed of light, Lena Howe, a researcher at Harvard cooled down sodium atoms to one billionth of a degree above absolute zero and passed light through them. We actually slowed them down all the way to, to one mile an hour and then you can actually, you can basically crawl faster than light. The result was light traveling through it with a 61 kilometer per hour reduced speed. Yet she didn't stop here, and brought the speed of light to zero before she warmed the cooled sodium atoms cloud, and then the light again traveled at its average speed. Zero speed of light is like listening to some lie, but that happened. But you haven't yet listened to this. 
During an experiment by researchers at NEC University, New Jersey, light left the cesium atoms cloud before it even entered it. Sounds impossible? The exact explanation is that the light pulse, not the light itself, traveled before it. Instead of considering it something against the laws of physics, you need to know that it was only an optical illusion. Let's talk about the dual personality of light that is traveling both as a wave and a particle. Consider a photon of light traveling in space where each photon is a tiny pack of waves moving up and down just the way a wave moves. We will call the speed of waves inside the packet the phase velocity, and the velocity of this photon as a whole would be the group velocity. We can even have the velocity of the first photon traveling in the wave, and call it the wavefront velocity. If we consider that we need to move information from the first photon in the wave to the last one, we can say that information cannot travel faster than the speed of light. However, the phase velocity, that's the speed of waves inside a packet, can be faster than the group velocity of light as per Einstein's relativity. So there's a difference in the speed of light and the speed of the waves within the light. Let's explore this kind of interesting fact in the upcoming experiment. Maybe you are already stunned, yet there's more to be surprised about. Suppose you are an enthusiast who keeps on looking at physics things. In that case, you already know about the experiment where a card with two slits was focused on with light to study how light can behave both as a particle and a wave. But recently, in 2023, some researchers have separated the slits of this experiment again. There is one difference in this new experiment except one. And, that is, the slits were now separated in time instead of space. These researchers took the indium tin oxide sheet, a very excellent material that can become reflective in certain conditions. If you cannot understand how this will look, then just turn your mobile screen off and look at it carefully, because it is also made up of the same material where when you look at the black screen, the light is reflected, while when you turn it on, the light enters the screen and you see the mobile's interface. This sheet with the spacing of time let the laser light reflect for only a few nanoseconds through a slit that was called the time slit. When the researchers focused more on how this laser light looked after reflecting, they only found the spread frequency of the light and nothing more. However, when they repeated the experiment with two beams of light in rapid succession with the same position of the emitter, sheet, and receiver, there was a difference during this second episode of the experiment. And that was the time in which the laser went through the sheet. But one thing that happened during this second episode was an even more noticeable interference pattern of the light. And this time the pattern wasn't just dark and light bands. Instead, the pattern had colors. Some of the frequencies in the light of the laser faded out, just the way intensity faded during the double slit experiment. Let's try to understand this experiment by opening it up further. Consider a 4D graph with space along the x-axis and time along the y-axis. The first photon leaves the laser light, passes through the time slit and hits the receiver, and then the same happens with the second photon. But the second photon is received at a later time, showing this second episode as slightly up in our 4D graph. If light acted normally and moved at its supposed speed, this experiment would have been completed here. Yet the light here is not only passing through the sheet, it's traveling along a path that takes it to pass down, not only from its own slit, but through the other slit too. 
But why did we say earlier that in this experiment, frequency is being messed up instead of intensity? That's because, just like the double slit experiment, what's happening at one side of the slit also happens at the other side of the slit, too. Can you think of the implications of this experiment if light entered the receiver at a different angle during both episodes? We have already talked about how photons in light contain little packets of waves. Just assume the angle of these waves during the first episode of this experiment, when our experiment was happening lower on the graph as time was on the x-axis, and during the second episode, when our experiment was happening a little higher on the graph corresponding to time. Both these waves will enter the receiver at different angles, and the peaks will occur more frequently. The frequency of a wave over time is greatly affected by the perception of color associated with the wave. A light with a lower frequency will be red, while as the frequency increases, the color of light is perceived as blue. This color perception thing is acceptable, yet there's still something that's not making sense, and that is the path of light through time. The straight lines in this experiment have the same speed of light that we discussed earlier in this video. That's 299,792,458 meters per second. What about the speed of light of the photons that are reflected back from the time slit? At some points it travels slower, while at some points it travels faster. From the perspective of light waves, they are actually traveling back in time. And don't forget, the two episodes we were just trying to understand are of a light wave from a single transmitter at two different time slots. That's just mind-blowing, right? But what did you learn from this experiment? Light always travels on a path that takes less time to move at the speed of light that's 299,792,458 meters per second. In reality, we never witness photons in light traveling back, but it does happen without us seeing it exactly. So folks, that's all for now. And if your mind really got twisted and you enjoyed it, then don't forget to like and subscribe to our video for appreciation.